Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us again today. Well, we've got another pistol video for you here. And this is a pistol that's actually, it's been featured in some other videos that we've done for comparison up to this point. And it was also listed in a top three video that was done a few months back um, about uh, my personal top three carry guns um, for me in my personal rotation. And there's been some challenges to the Glock 43. There are those that say the Glock 43 is no longer relevant because of all the other higher capacity small frame options that we have now. So the question is, is the Glock 43 irrelevant now? Or is it still one of the greatest concealed carry options that's currently available? We're going to try to answer all those questions and a whole lot more in just a minute. All right, once again, welcome back. Thank you so much for being with us today. We just want to take a moment to thank all of our viewers and uh, our subscribers. And if you are watching the channel today and this is your first time, or if you've been watching the uh, channel and you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, that is something that you could do that would actually help us out. And you can do that by locating that little subscribe button in the lower right-hand portion of your computer screen. Or if you're on a mobile device, you can scroll down below the video. You can hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. It'll let you know whenever we do something new. It helps us out a whole lot, and we really, really do appreciate it. So, the Glock 43. Whenever this pistol came out, um, I went down and I bought it immediately. Um... This was during a time when uh, I was I was buying quite a few smaller um, concealed firearms at that time. A lot of people had been anticipating a single stack firearm from Glock, and whenever the Glock 43 finally dropped in 2015, a lot of people wanted to get their hands on it, myself included, and so. When my local gun shop called and told me that they had my Glock 43, I took a lunch right then on the spot, went down and got it, and I couldn't wait to get to the range and shoot this gun. And of course, we'll talk about all the shooting characteristics when we get to the range section. Looking at the 43, you know, it looks very much like um, any Glock that you might be used to. And one thing we always like to do, of course, is give you a little size comparison with these guns. But I'm going to do a couple things here, and, and one of them is going to be a little bit different. But when I lay this gun down, um, we'll get to the specifics. But, of course, this is a 6 plus 1 capacity 9mm pistol. And I have lots of other small pistols that have varying capacities. But I've got my little uh, Sig Sauer P938 here. And this also happens to be a 6 plus 1 capacity 9mm. And the main reason why I'm showing you this gun is a lot of our viewers and, and others who are new coming to the channel, they have experience with a lot of other firearm types and sizes. And I like to give them an idea of kind of what the weapon's going to feel like when you carry it on the body. And if you've carried any of the smaller SIGs, um, you know what their weight and size feels like. But looking at this comparison, you can see that, you know, it is a little bit bigger than, say, your 938 here. And, of course, we're talking about a, a metal gun versus a polymer gun. So, you know, it's still going to be heavy. But I want you to see that it is actually going to be a little bit bigger in the holster than something like this. Now, another firearm I think that is useful to look at for comparison purposes is going to be the Glock 43X. And we'll talk about this pistol a lot during this video just because there are many people who believe that since we have the Glock 43X, which is a 10 plus 1 capacity, that there's not really any sense in having the Glock 43, which is 6 plus 1 capacity. And, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see if there's any merit to that when we have that discussion. But just kind of looking them over, obviously you can see that these guns are pretty much identical until you get to the grip. Obviously, you know, we're not talking about um, 
anything complicated that's where you're getting the extra rounds from which whenever we go over specifications I'll get into more detail but this is just to kind of give you an idea of what this is going to look like as far as size when you carry it kind of help you visualize what it's going to be like to have this as your carry gun alright so let's go ahead and jump in here and talk about the features so as I said you know the Glock 43 it's not unlike any Glock that you might be used to and Glock does a lot of things well um, and this is no exception but let's just kind of start with the basics here let me uh, do a quick safety check and let everybody see that we are clear you can see all the way through you can see our feed ramp and we do have an empty magazine so we are perfectly safe and clear alright so obviously you can see once again you can see the magazine here this is a six round um, capacity and nine millimeter and looking over our weapon Everything is the exact same as on the larger Glocks. Everything is just kind of scaled down. You know, we have our serrations on the rear of the slide here. Of course, uh, we have our slide stop and release. You have your magazine release right here on the side of the weapon, just like you are used to. And of course, we have our standard and I say standard Glock trigger for a reason because there's going to be some further discussion about the Glock trigger whenever we get to the range section here. Now, unlike the larger Glock pistols, the one thing that you're not going to find on here is an accessory rail. And the simple fact is, is that, you know, A, there's not any room for it, and B, you know, this is a smaller... Um, width firearm than your normal Glocks and so I believe most people probably had the same mindset of this being more of a uh, of a pocket gun and uh, so that wasn't really a consideration now there are accessories that you can still get for this though uh, Crimson Trace does make um, a laser sight you know system for this um, I've actually got one that fits around the trigger guard, and that's okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of carrying the gun in that configuration because it ends up taking up part of the space right here, and with a very small grip, it just kind of feels weird. So I wasn't a big fan of that. But you've got your grip texture here, which is... You know, it's not super, super aggressive, but it's adequate to keep a good hold on the firearm. The magazine you see me holding is the one with the pinky extension. They actually give you two. The other magazine, of course, is just a flush one here. Um, if you hold the firearm with the flush base plate, it doesn't feel unstable. It's, it's a two-finger grip, and... Sometimes I'm okay with a two-finger grip, and sometimes I'm not. Um, the Glock 43 actually does feel pretty decent, even though I would normally prefer to have finger grooves if I've only got two fingers to grip. But it doesn't feel out of place or unnatural on the 43, so I'm actually okay with it. And when you put the pinky extension magazine on it, I've got pretty big hands and fingers, and I can get pretty much most of those three fingers in place. My pinky's going to hang off a little bit, and if you got big hands, yours will too. But I feel like that it's adequate enough for me to get enough of my hand on the firearm to do a good job and hold it and shoot it well. And of course, um, sights. Now, the Glock 43 comes with the normal um, U-channel plastic sights, which I'm not a big fan of. So I changed them immediately, of course, to the Trigicon night sights here. And I kind of make it a standard practice of any Glock I buy to either put something like this or to put um, fiber optic sights just because I like better visibility on the sights I use for my carry gun. But like most other Glocks, like I said, it's the standard feature set you would expect. Now I do want to show you something because... We were talking about the difference between this and the 43X because a lot of people 
I don't think they really understand the difference between the two because it's not a huge difference. But what they've done here, if you look at these magazines, this isn't really hard to figure out. If you look at the magazines and look at the length of the magazines, and you can see that the Glock 43 mag is a bit thinner than the 43X mag. So it allows them to stagger the rounds a little bit more aggressively. And with the extra length, of course, that's all it took to change it from six to adding four extra rounds. They didn't have to add as much length to the magazine because of the little bit of extra width. And of course, that little bit of extra length that was added is exactly what you see when you look at the grip. And that's really the only major difference between these firearms. And I think it's important to note that because a lot of people will make it seem like that the 43X is this, you know, revolutionary product compared to the 43. And they're not all that much different. And of course, you have to remember that by adding that longer grip to get those extra rounds, it is going to be a little bit more firearm to carry. So that's something to keep in mind. But that's your basic overall of the features for your Glock 43. Let's talk about the range. Obviously, we're talking about a small frame 9mm pistol. I have a lot of different you know, small frame 9 millimeters. you know, MMP Shield, of course, my little 938. I have a lot of the newer ones as well. And there's a common problem with all of these guns, and that is, of course, and if it's a small gun, then it's going to be a little flippy whenever you shoot it. Now, the one thing I was pleased to report with the 43, to me, the gun, even though it's small, it does have some larger gun shooting characteristics. Now, don't don't get me wrong. I'm not saying it shoots like a Glock 19 because it does not. I could shoot a Glock 19, you know, four or five magazines through and, you know, feel like I've done something, have some good groups and, and relatively free of fatigue in my hand. You shoot three or four magazines through a Glock 43. I don't care how much shooting you do. You're going to notice that you've been shooting this small pistol because it is definitely going to um, start to sting a little bit after a while. Now it's not a big deal and the only reason I even mention it is because if you practice a lot, you know, if you're the kind of person that takes your carry gun and you go to the range a lot and you practice a lot, well it's good to know that if you run three or four or five mags through it that you're gonna you're gonna feel it. At the same time in a defensive situation which hopefully you will never be in. But if you are in it, um, obviously, hopefully, it will not take a whole lot of um, capacity to get you out of whatever situation that you're in, which is something else I want to talk about. You know, there are those that really, really focus on capacity when it comes to concealed carry weapons. If you are able to carry a larger firearm, or if you are able to carry... Um, something that has high capacity and that's what makes you comfortable you'll never hear me say that's a bad idea but it's an equally bad idea to tell someone that something like the Glock 43 is a bad choice because it's a 6 plus 1 capacity and let me explain you may have heard in some other videos but I'll just talk about it again there's what's known as the rule of threes and basically um, gunfight data, historical data has been analyzed over and over again, and it's kind of been whittled down to uh, most gunfights taking place, um, having fired three shots or less, three seconds or less inside of three meters. So the rule of threes. If the average gunfight's over in less than three shots and you've got seven total, well, obviously you're adequately prepared for the majority of encounters that happen. Are there encounters that are going to be different? Of course there are. And once again, you need to carry what makes sense for you, but don't let anybody tell you that a smaller capacity firearm is a bad idea. And as I've mentioned in other videos, I carry revolvers often as well in five or six shots, and I feel perfectly safe in doing so. Now, the range characteristics on the firearm 
are, are, are very good. Once again, you can feel it when you do a lot of shooting, but um, the gun performs well. I've heard people complain about the trigger on the Glock as if it were different, but um, using my scale, I was getting somewhere around seven pounds of a trigger pull on this trigger. And I believe it's supposed to be somewhere around seven or eight, but I was getting right at seven. Now, I don't think that the, that the trigger is different because that's about what I get on most of my Glocks. What I think is different is that the gun is very light. And so with the exact same Glock trigger that you're used to on a bigger gun, you're applying that same amount of force on a smaller gun. And obviously, you know, holding the gun and those forces working together, it's going to be an interesting feel. But the trigger, just so you'll see, it's like any Glock trigger you would expect. Come all the way back and then snap. You've got your reset about where you're used to it. This is not any different than any standard Glock trigger that I'm used to. And so I think that if you're used to shooting Glocks, and you take this one out, I believe that you'll find it to be the same way. Um, now, getting reliable results at long distance, that's gonna take some work, um, if that's what you wanna do. And I hear people argue about that being an important point, but once again, this is a defensive weapon. I train with defensive weapons inside of 21 feet. That's typically the way I do it, because if the if the threat is further away than that, are they really a threat? There's lots of things we can discuss there, but I don't do a lot of super long distance shooting with small guns like this because they're designed, of course, to get the threat away from you, hopefully, with no rounds fired. But if you do have to use your gun, you're going to be close enough to where um, championship accuracy is probably not going to be your primary concern. But like any small gun... Obviously, it's going to be a little flippy, and so getting good groups is going to take practice. It depends on how quickly you shoot, obviously, and how often you shoot. But overall, the Glock 43 performs, to me, just as good as many larger firearms. And it was extremely reliable with all of the ammunition that I used, which is what I've expected from Glock anyway. So, at the range, good performer, no surprises. So what's it like to carry the Glock 43 as your carry gun? Well, you know, this is one area where I think the 43 really shines. And I think this is one area where the 43 has an extreme amount of relevancy still today in the carry market. And let me explain what I mean. You take a firearm like this, and there's dozens of ways to effectively carry this. I have um, crossbreed um super tuck holster for this you know larger inside the waistband holster i've got uh sticky holsters which of course i'm uh i think these are great for smaller guns like this because you can get a good fit you can um snug your belt up inside the waistband here and then this firearm is perfectly safe now what i usually end up carrying this firearm in when i carry it is a little bit different variety um, but it's something that I found that I really, really liked. Um, DeSantis Gunhide makes a lot of great holsters. And this particular one um, was made for the... Well, it's made for several guns, but it fit the 43 perfectly. And what it allows you to do is it gives you a good, solid feel for this pistol. And at the same time, it has an extra spot here for an additional magazine. So whenever I carry this holster, I'm able to carry the gun and an extra magazine with me. So now, instead of seven rounds, I have 13. And by today's standards with the smaller um, carry guns, that's probably a lot more decent for what a lot of people think. Um, once again, I'm perfectly happy with a six round plus one capacity firearm. But because this holster fits so comfortably inside the waistband, you know, it's got a single uh, clip here that you can adjust the can't. And once this is inside the waistband, it's really, really nice. So if you want the extra magazine, you can. If you don't want the extra bulk, you can take it out. And of course, this just smashes flat. 
this is one of many, many really good options that you have for the, for the 43. And the reason why I mention that is because a lot of people, and I guess it's just because of all the new options, they feel that a firearm like this is no longer really relevant. But you got to remember a few things. Yes, this firearm has lower capacity, but you have to remember what they did to achieve that. If you compare this with a lot of other guns that have better capacity, in a lot of cases they're a lot bigger. The 43 is very slim. It's very easy to carry this weapon in a variety of the different uh, configurations I've shown you. But you take a gun like this and you put it in a sticky holster, you can stick it in your waistband and you can tuck it away at the three or, you know, 330 position and just completely forget about it. It's, it's extremely light, extremely comfortable. If you get in and out of the car, you can make little slight can adjustments inside the waistband for maximum comfort. It's fantastic. And that's why I listed this firearm as one of my top three personal carry guns that I go to, just because it is a great shooter. Of course, being a Glock, it's extremely reliable, but of course it scores super high for one of the most important categories, which is comfort. If you've got a carry gun and it's too bulky or it's too thick or it has any other limitation to where it is not comfortable for you to carry it on a regular basis, you're not going to. And it's not going to do you a whole lot of good if it's not on you. So overall, extremely easy to carry, extremely comfortable, and an excellent choice in my opinion. Overall impressions of the Glock 43. Well, as I said from the beginning, it has a lot to do with your expectations. And what I'm about to tell you, everybody listening, just kind of take this with a grain of salt because there's different kinds of people who have different expectations on their firearms. And so I think it would be very accurate to say if you are a, if you're one of these people that you're always looking for what's on the cutting edge, you want the maximum capacity, you want the maximum accessibility, you know, high capacity is extremely important to you, you're probably not going to appreciate the 43 because of all the other options that are available. Um, there's a lot of people who have uh, high tactical expectations. They want their firearms to be able to do a lot of things. Once again, you know, no room for lights, you know, no, not a lot of fancy extras are going to go to the Glock 43. But I do believe that most average concealed carry gun owners will love the 43. And I think that they will love it because it is simple, it's accurate, and it's easy and comfortable to carry. And those things, to me, are pretty important. You've got a lot of people that have a lot of um, expertise in firearms and they may have a lot of really high expectations. And that's fine. You know, once again, you know, besides carrying an extra magazine, there are some other options available now. You know, you can buy extended magazines for these now from different manufacturers. You can get extended base plates to add one or two rounds to a, a Glock 43 magazine. But that all comes back to a question that I ask people, though, which is, if you do all that and you add a bigger magazine and you make the gun bigger, you're kind of defeating the purpose of selecting a small gun to begin with. I've seen people get smaller firearms and put really long magazines sticking out of the firearm, and it just seems ridiculous because the whole point of the smaller gun is for concealability and comfort. So, for the average person, I think this is a fine choice. And it's the same reason I think that a revolver is still relevant. Even a five-shot revolver is relevant. Because the idea, in my belief, if you're a responsible gun owner, you want to be prepared because you want to be able to protect yourself and your family, or even someone you don't know if you see them in trouble. But you're never looking for trouble. And if things go really horribly wrong to where you have to produce your firearm in the first place, well, hopefully that's all it's going to take is just the 
um, attacker seeing that you are armed and they change their mind and they go the other way. That's what you want. Okay, but if things go sideways and you actually had to use your firearm, you have to be realistic. You know, how much ammunition do you really need? How many shots are you really going to have to take? Hopefully none. But taking the information available to us from most gunfights, something like this is more than adequate. So, in my opinion, is the Glock 43 irrelevant because of new choices? Absolutely not. The 43 remains today still one of the best choices you can make for a small, light, reliable concealed carry firearm. And I would readily trust my life to this firearm. And there's not a whole lot of small firearms that I'll say that about. So as far as I'm concerned, it's more relevant than it's ever been. All right. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, once again... Really appreciate you joining us today, and uh, we also want to thank, you know, our viewers um, for joining us. But of course, uh, being active in the comments, we have a lot of people that that put questions up, and we try to answer all questions that come to us. But sometimes um, other viewers get to it first, and we thank you for that because that's how all this works: is people sharing information and expertise. So we can't thank you enough. So we'll be back very soon with another video for you. And until that time, of course, you know, be safe. Um, we'll be back soon, and we can't thank you enough. Have a great day.